Welcome to our second lesson on properties of real numbers. So after this lesson, you should be able to classify real numbers according to their subsets and also use the properties we're going to talk about to evaluate and simplify some algebraic expressions. So to start off with, I like to describe or explain what each of these subsets of real numbers are. And we always start with the natural numbers. When you were a baby, you had your first birthday, you learned about the number one. Then you had another birthday and you learned the number two, and so on and so forth. So the natural numbers are our natural counting numbers. They're the first numbers you learn. And then you get a little bit older and you learn about the concept of zero, and then we call that the whole numbers. The whole numbers are all of the natural numbers plus zero. Okay. Then you get a little bit older, maybe you have a bank account and you learn about the concept of negativity or negative numbers. And so the integers are all the negative whole numbers or negative natural numbers, zero and the natural. So just, the circle just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The rational numbers then are all the numbers that can be represented as fractions. When you learn about a number line, you recognize that there are numbers between each of these integers. Okay, and they're fractions, they're parts of numbers. So all anything that can be represented as a fraction is a rational number. I see I forgot my uh, fraction bar here, that should be 3 eighths. Things like pi are also in there. Oh, excuse me, not, not under the rational, scratch that. The rational numbers have things like repeating decimals, um, such as one third, so it's 0.333. Um, any fractions, or decimals, excuse me, decimals that don't repeat, but they're terminating decimals. So terminating and repeating decimals are in the rationals. The other set that's in here is the irrationals, and though that's where pi goes, okay? Any square roots that can't be simplified, okay, are also considered irrational. We will talk about the natural, the base of a natural logarithm called E. Um, you might have seen that in your science classes. That'll come up, and we'll talk about that at a future lesson. But that's also an irrational number. So the real number system, just as I just explained, has all these subsets, the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, rationals, and irrationals, Okay, with the examples. So I just provided that as another way maybe for you to be able to visualize or see what each of those subsets are. So what you need to be able to do now is to be able to classify these real numbers. Okay, so if I give you a real number like 9, can you identify which of these subsets it belongs to? Well, first of all, it's a real number. Okay, all of these are going to be real numbers. Is it a natural number? Well, yes, it is. It's one of those counting numbers that you learn about. Is it a whole number? And yes, it is. It's a whole number. Is it an integer? It's also an integer. Remember, the integers include the whole numbers. It's also a rational number. It can be represented as a fraction. Okay, We can represent 9 as 9 over 1. We can represent it as 18 over 2. There are lots of fractions that would represent 9. Since it's rational, it cannot be irrational. There are no numbers that are both. So those are all the subsets that the number 9 belongs to. Letter B is negative 5 squared root of 3. It is a real number. Okay. It is also irrational because the square root of 3 cannot be simplified. Okay. So now it doesn't fall into any of these other subsets because it's irrational. Letter C is a fraction. It is a real number. Okay. All of these are going to be real numbers. It's not a natural number or a whole number or an integer, but it is rational because it's represented. It is a fraction, right? Since it's rational, it can't be irrational, so then we're done. Now letter D is a little bit tricky. You always need to check to see if you can simplify these. And this is actually equal to negative 4, right? If we simplify the square root of 16, that simplifies to negative 4. So now we know that's a real number. It's not a natural number or a whole number, but it is an integer. Okay, because it's negative, it's an integer, and it's also a rational number. So that's how you classify numbers according to the subsets of the real number system. So we have some properties of real numbers that you also need to be able to recognize. And some of these you should already know. The commutative, associative, and distributive properties. Uh, you should have learned those in seventh grade and in eighth grade. 
So the addition property uh, for the commutative property of addition says that the order that you add numbers doesn't matter. You'll get the same thing either way. Same with multiplication. Doesn't matter how you multiply them, you get the same number. So for example, 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3. They both give you 7. 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. Both are equal to 12. The associative property has three things, and it has to do with grouping and how you group them. So notice they're in the right order. They're in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C, but we're grouping the first two versus the last two. Okay, it doesn't matter how you group them, you'll get the same answer, same thing for multiplying. And then I'm going to jump down to the distributive property. The distributive property helps us get rid of parentheses. So if we have something like this, what we end up doing is we are going to distribute the a through the parentheses. So it's a times b right here, and then it's a plus sign, and then a times c, right? a, b plus a, c. Now if it's on the right-hand side, it doesn't matter. You could actually move it over, and we get b times a plus c times a. And we know that a, b, and b, a mean the same thing. a, c, and c, a mean the same thing. Okay, so that is the distributive property. It helps you get rid of parentheses so you can write something just as a sum. Now the identity property is a little bit different. The identity property says that um, whatever we add to a number, we want to get the same number back. So for addition, what number can we add to, say, 3 to get 3 back? And the identity property is 0. So 0 is called the additive identity. What could we multiply any number by to get the number back? And you probably guessed 1. 1 is a multiplicative identity. Now the inverse, um, the additive inverse is what do we multiply, excuse me, what do we add to a number to get the identity back? So when we're dealing with the inverse we want to end up with the identity. So if I have a number like 3, what do I add to 3 to get 0? And you probably guessed it's the opposite of the number. But for multiplication, it's different. What do I multiply a number by to get 1? And that is the reciprocal. Okay? So those are our properties that we are going to be using to solve problems. So in the next slide here, it says name the property that's illustrated. So this one is 5 plus 7 plus 8 is equal to 8 plus 5 plus 7. So we're still grouping the 5 and the 7. We haven't changed the grouping, so this one's a little tricky. What we did was we changed the order. Okay, we added the group first. Here we added the group second. So that is actually the commutative property of addition. Number 2 says identify the additive inverse and multiplicative inverse for negative 1 and 3 fourths. Well, remember the additive inverse. Okay, we want to end up with the identity. What is the additive identity? The additive identity is 0. So how do we get 0? What do we add to this number to get 0? Well, it's just the opposite one. It's the positive value, right? The multiplicative inverse is a little bit trickier, so we need to change this thing into an improper fraction. And it's going to stay negative and the denominator stays the same but we need to figure out what the numerator is. Well, remember we multiply 1 times 4, and that's 4, and then we add 3. So 4 plus 3 is 7. So as an improper fraction, this thing is negative 7 fourths. And so we want to know, what do I multiply negative 7 fourths by to give me the multiplicative identity? And remember, the multiplicative identity is 1. So what do I multiply this by to get 1? And your answer is the reciprocal, right? You just flip it over, negative 4 sevenths. So this last one says the properties of real numbers can be used to simplify expressions. So we want to simplify uh, this expression that's down here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our distributive property because we have parentheses. Notice it says justify each step. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 5m and I'm going to multiply 2 times n. And remember this is our distributive property. Whatever we have on the outside, we have to multiply everything on the inside by that number, right? So I like to put those arrows in there to clarify that. Then we actually multiply it out. Your justification or your step or your reason is just multiply. 
Well, then we need to get our like terms together, right? So I'm going to get the 6m next to the 10m. So I'm just going to switch these two terms. And that is the commutative property that allows me to do that. It changes the order. And now we're just going to add like terms. So we can just say simplify. You could say add like terms. And that's our final answer. That'll do it for this video. See you in class.